Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about the topic of guilt and shame. This is something that I think is very relevant to what's happening around us in our society today, because I see a lot of both people talking about experiencing guilt, and I also see a lot of like intentional shaming of other people. Guilt is an emotion that I think is tricky and complex. It can have both positive and ne negative effects. The positive effects seem pretty obvious to me. If someone is doing something that harms someone else, and they realize that, they can feel guilty, and the guilt can help them to stop that behavior, and it can help them to act in healthier ways later on. The negative side of guilt may not be obvious to everyone. It's pretty obvious to me, and I think there are a lot of people who will feel this way. One negative side is a sort of cycle of guilt that people can get caught in. I've experienced this myself when I've been depressed. The way it's often played out with me is that I've felt really bad, and I've started kind of complaining to people around me, like close friends, family, and the complaining has been so negative that it's caused those people to feel bad themselves, sort of like dragging them down. And then when I realize that, I start feeling guilty about it, and that makes me feel worse, like it fuels the depression, and it makes it harder to get out of the depression, so it's like a cycle of guilt. I've heard other people talk about experiencing cycles of guilt with respect to addictions and other unhealthy behaviors. Like a common example that a lot of people I know personally have talked to me about is self-injury, like cutting yourself, for example. A lot of people have said that when they do this, they feel a sort of release, but then they feel really guilty or ashamed afterwards, and that feeling of guilt and shame feeds into the sort of unhealthy self-image and unhealthy state of mind that actually contributes to them continuing that behavior. So that's one example of how guilt can be harmful. Another example of how guilt and shame can be harmful is when people are shamed or made to feel guilty about things that don't actually harm anyone. And a really twisted and kind of perverse example of this that I think is very disturbing to me is victim blaming in the cases of rape and sexual assault. Like when someone is raped or sexual ass sexually assaulted and that person is blamed by others, like people say, oh well it was her fault because of the way she was dressed or because of the way she acted or find other ways to kind of blame the person who was assaulted. That really bothers me. So that's a, just another example of how shame and guilt can be damaging. So, you may say, if we're going to throw out guilt, how are we going to get people to stop doing things that are harmful? Well, I don't necessarily think guilt is necessary. I don't know about you, but there are a lot of things that I could do on a daily basis. Like I'm walking down the street, and I see someone, and I could just punch that person in the face if I wanted to. I've never done anything like that, and I've never felt guilty about anything like that, but I don't do it. There's so many reasons why I wouldn't do that, and I think that just illustrates that there doesn't really need to be any guilt in the picture for someone to not do something that's harmful. And in general, like, when we do something and we realize that it's harmed others, we may or may not feel guilt. We may feel a lot of guilt, we may feel a little, we may feel none at all. And what really matters in the end is not how bad we feel, but whether or not we stop the harmful behavior. So, I want to focus, when interacting with other people, on explaining to them how and why I think their actions are harming me or harming other people. I don't want to set out with the intention of making someone feel bad. I don't want to deliberately guilt trip someone or shame them. I just want to be like, hey, like, could you try to think of this other person's perspective, and like, I think what you're doing is harmful to this person, I don't like it, and so on. I think there are a lot of ways of just directly illustrating the harm, and I ultimately think that's a much healthier way of encouraging good behavior than trying to guilt trip someone or shame them. So I hope I've questioned some ideas, and I hope that this has been thought-provoking and insightful. Thank you!